Hello everyone, we are here with another video on Amazon RDS for Oracle and this time it's for using cross-platform transportable table spaces to migrate your data to Amazon RDS for Oracle. My name is Vishal Patil. I'm a senior database specialist solutions architect at AWS. My co-presenter Chavid Mohammad will demonstrate on how to use this method to migrate table spaces to Amazon RDS for Oracle. As a first step, let's take a quick look at some of the topics we want to cover in this video. In this video, we will start with what Amazon RDS for Oracle is and why move to manage services. What are the existing migration options with RDS for Oracle? Then we will introduce migration using XTTS, that is cross-platform transportable table spaces, along with its benefits, best practices, and limitations. Followed by a demo where we will show what steps to carry out for this type of migration. This picture is to illustrate the burden of managing databases. We can look more closely at the various database administration tasks required to keep a database up and running. With Amazon RDS, it removes the burden by managing a number of these tasks, including automatic failover, backup and recovery, database upgrades, isolation and security, industry compliance, scaling, automated patching, advanced monitoring, and routine maintenance, to name a few. It leaves you only with the tasks that matter most to your application, such as schema design, query construction, and query optimization. Amazon Relational Database Service, RDS, was built by AWS as a way to help customers reduce the complexity in supporting critical transactional applications by making it easy to set up, operate, and scale a relational database in the cloud. RDS is fully managed, that means it has automated database management tasks, so customer engineers can spend their time on more impactful tasks such as application optimization. RDS for Oracle offers flexible licensing through either BYOL, bring your own license, or LI, license included, for Standard Edition 2, and BYOL, bring your own license for Enterprise Edition. With respect to availability and disaster recovery, it offers several features like multi-AZ, read or mounted in-region or cross-region replicas, cross-region automated backups, etc that is to meet your workloads RPO and RTO requirements. AWS supports many tools or services to migrate data to Amazon RDS for Oracle using logical and physical methods. Let's take a look at some of those methods. As you can see on the left, there is source Oracle database and on the right, there is target RDS for Oracle instance. Under logical methods, AWS's database migration service or Oracle's Golden Gate can be used to migrate data to RDS Oracle. These methods support change data capture for continuous replication. We can also use Oracle's data pump utility to export data on source. The export dump files can be sent to S3 and using S3 integration on RDS for Oracle, these dump files can be made available to RDS for Oracle to import using Oracle's data pump utility. Amazon Elastic File System EFS can be used instead of S3 to avoid copying of dump files between local storage and S3 for both source and target before importing the dump. On source database, Data Pump can directly create export dump files on mounted EFS file system, and those dump files can be directly imported from that EFS file system in RDS Oracle instance using EFS integration option. You can watch our video on how to enable EFS integration for RDS for Oracle instance. We will provide link for that video in description section. Next. We will look at another migration method that is using Oracle transportable table spaces to migrate to RDS for Oracle. XTTS stands for cross-platform transportable table spaces. 
Migration using XTTS is combination of physical migration that is table space backups using RMAN and logical migration that is metadata export and import using data pump. As the name suggests, this method allows migration of table spaces from databases running on Linux or non-Linux operating systems to RDS for Oracle. Amazon RDS for Oracle runs on Linux operating system. You can migrate one or more table spaces to RDS for Oracle using this method. XTTS allows to lower downtime for migration by rolling forward using incremental backups until application cutover. Downtime is required only during final incremental backup and recover using roll forward and metadata export import. There are no additional licenses required. One of the advantages is with this method, you can avoid logical corruption or data integrity errors encountered in logical migration methods. Let's walk through high level steps in the process of migrating table spaces to RDS Oracle using XTTS. In initial step, check prerequisites like time zone file version between source and target. Source and target should use compatible database character set and national character set and check for other general limitations for transportable table spaces. We will see these limitations shortly. Identify table spaces to be transported. Make sure these are self-contained. That means none of the database objects inside a table space set are dependent on any of the database objects outside of that table space set. Install XTT convert scripts on source you can download these scripts from my Oracle support document 247.1245.1. We will provide link for this document in the description section. In prepare phase, take level zero RMAN backup of the table spaces to be transported using XTT convert scripts. Transfer those backup files to RDS Oracle. Restore the level zero backup using RDS admin transport util package. In roll forward phase, we take RMAN incremental backups periodically while the source database is still active. We transfer those backups to RDS Oracle and use that to restore and roll forward. In final transport phase, you will put table spaces to be transported in read only mode. This time, your application will not be able to run DMLs against objects in these table spaces. You will take final incremental backup and you will also create metadata export dump using expdp utility. You will transfer the final incremental backup and metadata dump file to RDS Oracle. Then roll forward on RDS Oracle using final incremental backup and then import the metadata. Finally, you can alter table spaces in read-write mode in RDS Oracle. As discussed earlier, there are two methods to transfer files from source Oracle database to RDS Oracle. First, S3. Second one is EFS. In this slide, we discuss about XTTS migration using S3 integration for RDS Oracle. You can enable S3 integration option in custom option group and modify RDS Oracle instance to use this option group. This allows your RDS Oracle instance to access files on S3 bucket. As you can see, there is a source Oracle database with a directory object pointing to a location on that database server. This is the location where RMAN backups and metadata export dump are created. Similarly, there is a target RDS for Oracle instance, which has a directory object pointing to a location on that RDS for Oracle instance. This is the location from where RMAN backups and metadata dump files can be accessed by RDS for Oracle instance. Now let's look at the process. Take level zero RMAN backup and copy to S3. Then download to RDS Oracle instance 
then restore the backup on RDS for Oracle instance. Take incremental backups depending on how frequently you want to take those incremental backups and repeat the steps of copying to S3 and download from S3. Roll forward the table spaces backup on RDS Oracle using these incremental backups. Finally, put table spaces in read-only mode and take final incremental backup as well as metadata export dump. Repeat the process of copying to S3 from source and then download from S3 to RDS Oracle directory object. Here you will apply final incremental backup. It is recommended to take a manual snapshot on your RDS Oracle instance before metadata import. This allows you to restore your database in case of any issues with metadata import. After successful metadata import, you will open the table spaces in read-write mode before application cutover. As you can see, transfer of files using S3 involves copying of backups and metadata dump to S3 bucket from source and then on target RDS Oracle, those files need to be copied from S3 to database directory object on RDS Oracle. EFS, Elastic File System, is a recommended option for files transfers as for S3, you have to copy files to S3 and then download from S3 to directory object in RDS Oracle. Also, space allocated for these backup files and metadata dump on RDS Oracle will count against the space allocated for your RDS Oracle instance. So if you have large table spaces to migrate, you will have to allocate more space to RDS Oracle to accommodate these. As you know, it is not possible to shrink the space allocated to RDS Oracle, although allocated space can be reused. In EFS integration, directory objects for both source and RDS Oracle can be directly on the EFS file system, which avoids the need of transferring or copying files. Similar to S3 integration, you can enable EFS integration by adding the option in custom option group and assign that option group to your RDS Oracle instance. Let's look at the process. Take level zero RMAN backup to EFS file system mounted on source. As same file system is mounted on RDS for Oracle, you can restore the backup to RDS Oracle. Take incremental backups depending on desired frequency. Use these incremental backups to restore and roll forward the backup on RDS Oracle. Last step is to take final incremental and take metadata export dump. It is recommended to take a manual backup on your RDS Oracle instance before metadata import. Import the metadata on RDS Oracle before opening table spaces in read-write mode. Let's look at some of the limitations. This slide lists some of Oracle's limitations for transportable table spaces in general. Compatible database character set, that is same database character set or source should be strict subset of the target character set. Compatible national character set means either same national character set for both source and target or the table spaces to be transported contain no columns with ncar, nvarchar2 or nclob data types. DB time zone has to be same between source and target to be able to transport tables with columns of type timestamp with local time zone. You can only transport a table space set that is self-contained. That is, as explained earlier, none of the database objects inside a table space set are dependent on any of the database objects outside of that table space set. Some of the violations examples are an index inside the set of table spaces is for a table outside of the set of table spaces. 
Another example could be a partition table is partially contained in the set of table spaces. One more, a referential integrity constraint points to a table across a set boundary. You cannot use transportable table spaces for administrative table spaces such as system sysocs. TD encrypted columns cannot be transported using transportable table spaces. You can transport table spaces from enterprise edition into standard edition databases, but you cannot transport from standard edition into an enterprise edition database as the transport packages to export the table spaces aren't present in standard edition. This slide lists some of the Oracle's limitations for transportable table spaces with XTTS using RMAN incremental backups method. The current version does not support Windows operating system as either source or destination. Cross-platform is only possible with Enterprise Edition. This procedure cannot be used with Standard Edition. The source database's compatible parameter must not be greater than the destination database's compatible parameter. The source database must be in archive log mode. The set of table spaces being moved must all be online and contain no offline data files. Table spaces must be read-write. Table spaces that are read-only may be moved with the normal XTTS method. There is no need to incorporate cross-platform incremental backups to move table spaces that are always read-only. Minimum version for source and destination is 11.203. The Oracle version of source must be lower or equal to destination. Therefore, this procedure can be used as an upgrade method. Obviously, transportable table spaces restrictions will apply. Earlier, we saw Oracle's limitations for transportable table spaces and XTTS with RMAN incremental backup method. There are some additional limitations on using XTTS with incremental backups for RDS for Oracle. These are as of this recording. We at AWS continuously build capabilities to address such limitations based on customer feedback. Neither the source or target database can use standard edition 2, SE2. Only enterprise edition is supported. You can't migrate data from an RDS for Oracle DB instance using transportable table spaces. You can only use transportable table spaces to migrate data to an RDS for Oracle DB instance. Again, this is as of this recording. You cannot transport table spaces that are TD encrypted. If you transfer files using Amazon S3, the maximum supported file size is 5 terabytes. You cannot transport table spaces into an RDS for Oracle database instance in an Oracle replica configuration. As a workaround, you can delete all replicas, transport the table spaces, and then recreate the replicas. Now, let's look at some of the best practices to use XTTS with RDS Oracle. Check prerequisites for source and target. Some of the prerequisites as we discussed earlier, compatible release level, time zone version, database and national character set, picking self-contained set of table spaces, um, then checking the limitations around transportable table spaces and XTTS. Use Amazon Elastic File System EFS for file transfer. Turn on automatic backups on RDS Oracle instance. Take a manual snapshot of RDS Oracle instance before metadata import. This allows you to restore the RDS Oracle instance if there are problems with metadata import. 
cleanup or archive backup and metadata dump files after migration. This will help you to save cost on the storage. These are some of the resources to review to understand more on migration to RDS Oracle using cross-platform transportable table spaces. Links for these are provided in description section of the video. With that, let me hand it over to my colleague Javed Mohammad to demonstrate migration using XTTS. Thank you, Vishal. Hello, everyone. My name is Javed Mohammad, and I'm a database solutions architect here at AWS. Today, I'm excited to guide you through a demonstration on migrating your Oracle databases to RDS Oracle using transportable table spaces. Without any further delay, let's dive right into the demo. For this demo, we have already created a EFS mount. The name of the mount is XTTS EFS and this is the file system ID. Next, we search for RDS here. And under RDS, we will click on DB instances. And then in the list, we will search for our RDS Oracle test instance that is ORCL XTTS. Next, we go to the configuration tab. We check for the option groups. Here we can see that we have an option group XTTS demo EFS integration, which is in sync and active for this database. Next, we go into this option group. Here we can see that our RDS Oracle test instance ORCL XTTS is already associated with this option group. And we can also see that EFS integration option is enabled in this option group with the same file system ID that we created earlier. Next, we connect to our target RDS Oracle test instance. Here, we are going to check for any failed XTTS attempts so that we can clean up before moving ahead. As we can see, there are none. So we'll proceed with the next step. We will check our time zone file version here. And we'll also check the character set of the target database. Next, we create a directory pointing to our EFS mount. And then we can see that the directory has been created here. And we'll also check the character set of the target database. Next, we create a directory pointing to our EFS mount. And then we can see that the directory has been created here. And then we'll also list the contents of this directory. And there are none as expected. Next, we connect to our source database. We check the time zone file version here and then we make sure that it is less than or equal to the target database instance. This is important for the data pump to work. And then we'll also check the character set of the source database and then we make sure that it is a match or a subset of the target database, which is again important for data pump to work. And in the next step, we are going to check the status of the table spaces, SOE and SH. SOE is sales order entry and then SH is sales history, which are supposed to be transported. And we can see here that the status is online. Next, we do a transport set check on these table spaces just to make sure they are self-contained and there are no violations that are preventing us from transporting them. Here, we can see that there are no violations, so we can move ahead with the next step. On the source database server, we can see that the file system, EFS file system is mounted. And there are no contents in it. Next, we navigate to the directory where we downloaded and extracted the zip file from Oracle site, which contains the XTTS driver script.
then we are going to edit the xtts.properties file to make sure that the platform ID, the table spaces and the backup location is updated properly. The platform ID is imported in cases where we transport across platforms like from Unix to Linux, which is what RDS for Oracle runs on. And we also specify the table spaces to transport as well as the location where backup should be written to our EFS mount here. In the next step, we are going to run the backup script to kick off a full or level zero backup of SOE and SH table spaces on the source database. So here you can see the backup is completed. We are going to check the contents of the EFS mount and we can see the backup pieces here. We'll also check the contents of res.txt or restore.txt and then we see the information of table spaces as well as backup pieces in res.txt. In the next step, we are going to change the permissions of these backup pieces so that RDS Oracle instance can access them. Then we connect to the target RDS Oracle instance. And then we list the contents of the data pump directory we created earlier. And here we can see the backup pieces there. We will try to run a import of this table spaces SOE and SH using this command as we can see on the screen. And it fails with the error that the file res.txt doesn't exist. So we go back to our source server. And then we copy this file res.txt from the temporary directory to the EFS mount. So once it is done, we go back to the target server and then we'll rerun the import of these table spaces. And this time we can see that it has been completed successfully and also it returns a task ID. Using the task ID, we are going to check the contents of the task log. And then here, as per the output of the task log, we can see that the latest import attempt was successful. Now we go back to our source database and capture an incremental backup. So we set the environmental variables and run the backup script again to take an incremental backup of the source database table spaces. So here we can see that the backup has been completed. And then if we look at the rest.txt contents, so we have two more backup pieces here. Those are the incremental backups. And then we copy the rest.txt file from temporary directory to EFS mount. We will also open up the permissions for this backup pieces so that RDS can read them. Shifting back to our target RDS Oracle instance, we will try to import this incremental backups. So first we will connect to the RDS Oracle instance here, and then we list the contents of the directory, data pump directory. And then we can see that the, the latest incremental backups here. And then we will run the import once again for the table spaces SOE and SH. And then the task has been completed and it returns a task ID. Using this task ID, 
we will look at the contents of the task log. And then here we can see that the latest import was successful. On source database, we are going to kick off a final incremental backup. We will connect to the database. We will put the table spaces in the read only mode here. And then we will set the environment variables and then run the backup script to take the final incremental backup. So the backup is completed and if we liquid the contents of res.txt, so there are two more backup pieces. So we are going to copy the res.txt from temporary directory to EFS mount. And then we are also going to open up the permissions on these backup pieces so that RDS can read them. On the source database server, we will also take a metadata backup of the table spaces using data pump. So here we can see that the data pump backup has been completed successfully and then we have all the necessary files in the EFS mount. We will go to the target database, connect to it and then list the contents of the data pump directory and we will see that the latest incremental backups along with the data pump dump file. And then we are going to run the final import. And then we have a task ID here. And then we are going to look at the contents of the task log. And then here we can see from the output of the task log that the task has been finished successfully. Now onto the RDS console, we are going to take a snapshot backup of this RDS Oracle instance. So this backup is important in case we hit a correctable error during the table space metadata import. So we can use this snapshot to restore the database instead of importing the data all over again. Here we can see that snapshot backup is completed and then we connect to the source database. We try to identify the schemas corresponding to this table spaces. And then here we can see we have two schemas, SOE and SH. We will connect to the target database that is RDS Oracle database. And then we'll create these schemas. And then we will run the import of table space metadata. So here we can see that uh, import is completed. As a next step, we are going to validate the table spaces for both physical and logical corruptions using Armen in the target database. From the output here, we can see that both the data files have been validated and then there are no blocks failed. Next, we are going to put both the table spaces in the read write mode. Now that we have altered the two table spaces to read write mode and we can check and see several gigabytes of segments as well as dozens of segments across the two table spaces. We also see that the status of both the table spaces is online. That completes the transport as well as the demo. That brings us to the end of this video. We hope it will help you migrate your Oracle databases to Amazon RDS for Oracle using XTTS method with minimal application downtime. For any feedback, please drop a comment on this video. Thank you for watching and happy cloud computing.